So over the last 10 days, Denver has seen several hit and run crashes that took people's lives. Nine News reporter John Glasgow joins us on Sheridan near First Avenue in Denver. John, that's one of the places that somebody died recently. Now, Gary, this is the intersection where at least four drivers ran over a pedestrian trying to cross the street and not a single one stopped to help. Now, police are hoping that some information will come forward in this case, but as you mentioned, this is at least one of three deadly hit and runs over the last 10 days. There's also a memorial at the intersection of 54th and Federal. That was where a man lost his life in another fatal hit and run. 26 year old Jonathan Fanter was hit and killed while riding a scooter early Sunday morning. Denver police are still looking for the driver who took off. Denver Streets Partnership says more needs to be done to make sure our roads are safer as hit and runs make up a good portion of traffic fatalities. In the meantime, people are dying and their loved ones want answers. It's very heartbreaking. It's beyond heartbreaking. I can't even explain what I want to do to this person. So officers did make an arrest in one deadly hit and run. That was at Pena and 40th. That was after midnight on Saturday. They've arrested Taylor Lindsay. He's in jail this morning, accused of causing that crash and then taking off. Anyone with information in Fanter's case here or the ones that uh, happened with the uh, four vehicles that took off are asked to contact Denver Police or Colorado State Patrol. All right, John, boy, you got to wonder what is wrong with people, right? Thanks for that. And right now, Colorado's most extreme gun rights group is looking to keep up its momentum with another win, trying to temporarily stop enforcement of Colorado's large capacity magazine ban nearly a decade after it became law. Rocky Mountain gun owners want the law tossed out completely. So we've reported on how gun shops have found ways around the law that bans magazines that hold more than 15 rounds. RMGO's legal arm filed a temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction. The group previously challenged the ban in state court but they lost. Last week, they filed a lawsuit in federal court, hoping that a recent Supreme Court decision on a gun law in New York could help them dismantle Colorado's law. RMGO has been busy since the Supreme Court decision signaled a more conservative direction on gun rights. They're also challenging Superior's new gun laws, which ban assault weapons. A judge granted a temporary restraining order in that case. There are now five new gun control laws in Boulder County. Commissioners passed all of them in a meeting last night. They're very similar to the rules passed in other cities in the county, including the ones that landed the town of Superior back in court. The new laws cover unincorporated parts of the county. They place new restrictions on concealed and open carry, regulate ghost guns, change the waiting period to buy a gun, and ban the sale of assault weapons in large capacity magazines. A judge temporarily put Superior's assault weapons ban and magazine ban on hold last week after a lawsuit filed by that same gun rights group that Natasha was talking about. At last night's county commissioner's meeting, a representative from Rocky Mountain gun owners said, they would sue Boulder County next. Republican Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters raised nearly two and a half times as much money for her campaign after she lost as she did during the race. Right now, all that money, a quarter million dollars, is going to a recount that'll confirm she lost the Republican primary for Secretary of State by 88,000 votes. It cost the state $255,000 to get every county to recount the election. Donors, mostly from out of state, gave her $516,000 leading up to and after her primary loss. Before she lost, she only raised 216000 A campaign finance attorney says it was shocking Peters raised so much money for a campaign that was over. I have never heard of a candidate who raised more money after they lost uh, than, than they did during the entire campaign. Well, that recount is happening now. The Secretary of State's office says so far 15 of Colorado's 64 counties have finished the recount. They have to have it finished by Thursday. Republican observers watching Denver's recount say Peter's total there has not changed. The candidates for attorney general in Colorado, excuse me, went head to head in a debate for the first time last night. Democratic attorney general incumbent Phil Weiser is running against Republican district attorney John Kellner. The two shared their views on a variety of topics, including police force, the opioid epidemic and abortion. If any county, as one is already threatened, tries to pass an ordinance prohibiting access to abortion care, I've told any county I will take them on in court to enforce this law. 
And as somebody who supports the Dobbs decision returning this back to the states to make a decision, it's also important to recognize that Colorado, through its legislature, has spoken on the issue. And as the Attorney General, I can commit to you in much the same way that Mr. Weiser did, that I will defend the law. Weiser and Kellner both ran unopposed in their primaries. Weiser was elected to his four-year term as Attorney General in 2018. Kellner was elected District Attorney for the 18th Judicial District in 2020. Well, new this morning, President Biden expected to sign another executive order today outlining protections for reproductive care. This comes as the debate over abortion continues on Capitol Hill. And voters in Kansas are now the first in the country to cast ballots on abortion since the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. NBC News projects voters in Kansas overwhelmingly voted to protect abortion rights in the state constitution. Now, if the ballot measure had passed, the Kansas state legislature would have an opportunity to change abortion access, limiting it or even banning it outright. That would have an impact on abortion providers here in Colorado who would see already uh, a surge in out-of-state patients coming here for care. Advocates say half of calls inquiring, half of calls inquiring, Inquiring about care in Colorado are actually coming from out of state. The Republican candidates for Senate in Colorado, Joe O'Day, the Republican candidate, uh, Joe O'Day, has said that he would break with his party to codify Roe v. Wade on a federal level. But now that there actually is a bipartisan bill in the U.S. Senate to do that, to establish federal abortion rights, O'Day says he wants to see more restrictions before he could vote for it. The bill would allow states to put restrictions on post-viability abortions, but not outright bans. The bill would also protect access to contraception. O'Day's spokesperson said the bill was a good start, but said O'Day would want restrictions on abortion funding and a parental notification clause added before he would support it. O'Day is running against incumbent Democratic Senator Michael Bennett, who is a sponsor of that Senate bill. And one thing you want to know about the weather today, after yesterday's 97, a bit of a break. Temperatures in the 80s and lower 90s along the Front Range with isolated storms. But look at tomorrow, the heat comes right back and we're in the mid to upper 90s with an isolated storm.